What's going on YouTube and all my Forex fiends out there? Corey Smith here, CoreFX, bringing you guys another video. Um, this one is going to be a little bit of a different topic, a little bit of a shorter video as well. I'm going to be going over, I get a lot of questions all the time about my charting, um, what I use, um, you know, what I like my watch lists to be built on, how I follow my currency pairs, all of that. So, um, what I'm going to do here is just give you a quick little breakdown of how I... Uh, as a professional trader, mark up my charts, how I, what software I use, um, and just some other little tools that I use that I think might be beneficial to some of you guys out there um, that are trying to become a professional trader. So um, beginning with, I use TradingView, um, tradingview.com. It is an unbelievable website. I have zero affiliations with them. Um, I just really love the software. It's probably the most common, popular used quoting I mean, uh, charting software there is out there, whether it be stocks, cryptos, Forex, whatever it is. They're very smooth. They're very easy to use. Um, the data is accurate. There's a lot of different pools you can pull data from. There's a lot of different tools. It's constantly evolving and it's expanding. Very innovative company. Um, they've got all kinds of features from back testing to technical analysis to news reports to being able to exact execute trades like to your broker, all kinds of things. So um, first and foremost, what I want to do is, um, if you guys check out my supply support and resistance video, I show you how I draw these lines and how I color code them and all. But um, the first thing that I do to keep my charts looking nice and clean is I limit my indicators. I've got some indicators on the charts at all times if I need my average true range and my RSI. Um, but if you double click the chart, they'll go away. Or they'll come back. I keep them away. So I have the indicators on the chart, but I double click so they're hidden. Um, if I need them, I pop them up. If I don't, I keep them out of view so that I can focus on these candlesticks and um, not have to worry about all the clutter on the chart. Second of all, what I do is I take horizontal lines to make support and resistance areas. So I have a video going over how to draw them. Check out my page if you want to see that. I'm not doing that here. I'm just going to show you how I keep my charts clean. So I have a horizontal ray for the daily chart, right? I use that as red. If there's an area of support and resistance, wherever it may be, I'll throw that on there and mark it with red. I only mark areas where price is trading near. So I'm not going to leave support, not that they don't matter, but I'm not going to leave, you know, support and, and uh, resistance zones that are here when, you know, price is trading weeks away from that area. That's why I constantly update my charts and do my watch list and my weekend videos and my weekend weekend updating um, to keep these charts clean. So I will only be putting these areas where I see price near, right? Otherwise, there's going to be 5,000 marks all over my chart. And every time I look at my chart, I'm gonna my eyes are going to roll, right? So um, first thing that we do is we want to make sure we are only dropping these areas where price is trading near. You know, it's just, it's just for a viewing purpose only. It's just to give you ease of uh, focus and make these charts cleaner, right? So we only want to put these areas where price is trading near. Um, I do the weekly and I do the daily, and then I use the lower time frames for other things. Um, but we just want to put these, you know, areas. This is somewhat close to there. Uh, weekly, I only put usually two areas. Um, and we leave it at that, right? So we go down to the lower time frames, it's not too cluttered. And then you can use, you know, these lower time frames for things like counter trend lines, things of that nature, right? Okay, so um, minimize your drawings on the chart. If you're going to be using Fibonacci, use it as you go. Don't keep it there. So if you want to take the Fibonacci from this last strong move, throw it out there. Okay, we're around the 3 to 2 to 50 level. Don't keep that on your chart always, you know. Um, that's just going to, it's just clutter. It's just clutter. So throw it on there. Maybe you can, you know, throw a little text box out here. Um, and keep this always on your chart, you know, so that you remember when you come back to it that that's what this zone's for. Or maybe instead you just have a little color-coded box that you throw here. And you put it um, orange when it's a 382 to 50 level. So you know when you see this zone that price is trading in right now, oh, this is a 382 to 50 level of this retracement. Right? So just organize your charts. Make sure you have a code, color code, to the drawing code. Um, just have a code to, you know, structure these zones, these areas, these levels. And it'll make it a lot easier and cleaner to look at these charts. I, I obviously color code my moving averages. So I've got the 20 in blue, the 50 in red, 200 in gray, black, 
or if I switch it over to the dark theme, I'll switch this to a lighter color. It kind of looks fine as it is there, so you can see it better, right? So, um, with that being said, this is this is really just basic stuff on how I keep my charts clean. Um, you've got all your indicators and tools and all on the left here, right? Um, on the right side over here is where you have a bunch of different things. You've got your alerts here. If I am, um, you know, away from the charts and I want to be able to check out, um, <coughs> I want to be looking for this pair long if it breaks this price level, right? Right up here, add an alert, type in what the price level is, boom, enter it. Or you can even just go over to, let's say I want it to be this level here, go over to the right, this little plus button, add an alert, bang, you got an alert. And then this is where you manage all your alerts. Over in this little area here. Okay, then this top part is the go-to. This is one of the most important things for me in my trading. Um, I made this list myself of all the pairs that I trade, right? I grouped them in, in section. You got the US dollar majors here. You got the yen crosses here. You got the pound crosses here. Euro crosses here. Aussie crosses here. And New Zealand crosses here. And then CAD Swiss down here, right? So organize your charts. Organize here. I can start with my, with my watch list and I can just, you know, flip through. All these charts, and I can see where prices is at, what I'm looking for, what I'm watch watching for, all that. Now, a new feature they just added, which is brilliant, is to the left of these pairs, this little red flag, right? So, as my watch list changes day to day, week to week, I can change these little red flags. I know right now all these pairs with the red flags are pairs that I am actively watching for setups, right? It's beautiful. It's simple. It's easy. You can remove it. You can add it. You can take them off. You can swap it. A diff bunch of different things you can do. You can add different... Um, lists, so you can create different watch lists. I've got them for crypto pairs. I've got them for the indexes. You know, the dollar, euro, yen, pound, CAD, franc, Aussie, gold, SP500, oil. You know, you can you can break it down into that. I got uh, different stocks that I'm watching at the time. So um, you can just pull up your your flag list, right? This will pull up your your cryptos, your stocks, your forex, anything you've got. Um, so you can make different watch lists here. It's it's beautiful. This is a wonderful, wonderful um, feature to have here in TradingView. And again, just, just really focus on keeping your charts clean, limiting them. Don't have a million trend lines. Don't have a million support and resistance lines. Have just what's relevant to price at the time. Now, I'm not saying that these areas up here aren't important or that these levels here aren't important. All I'm saying is when you update your charts and your analysis and your watch list and all, as you go, that's when you find these levels. That's when you, you know, pick your weekly chart out. And now price is, let's say, trading up here somewhere. That's when you identify that level and mark it on the chart. I'm not saying they're irrelevant. I'm just saying when price is this far away from it, it's irrelevant to have it sitting on your chart. So really just keep your charts clean. Only have what's necessary on them at a time. Use the watch list function over here. Use the flag function. Trading view is free. There's a paid version that saves more of your charts and has different features like that. I take advantage of. I think it's, it's a very um, highly recommended thing. Again, I have zero affiliation with TradingView. It's just my personal opinion. Um, however, if you don't have you know the budget for it, you don't want to spend extra money on it, you're just starting to learn this stuff, you don't need to save 28,000 charts, um, stick to the free version and just get used to it. You can link your broker up to this, right? You can link, um, so that you can trade directly off this. You can do all kinds of tools you can use measuring to measure pips and uh, time periods and candlesticks um, you can really do so many things with trading view so I guess this turned into more of a um, trading view review but essentially uh, I just wanted to show you guys the some of the tools I use and how they are beneficial to me um, trading view is my charting go-to I don't even use MetaTrader 4 or interactive brokers whatever charting program I'm using for my broker to trade on. Um, I don't use that at all to do my charting. I strictly use TradingView for my charting and then switch over to MetaTrader for execution. And that pretty much does it. So just want to make a quick video here guys on how to keep your car charts clean and sexy, how to keep them nice looking, um, what tools I use to help me narrow down what I'm watching, how I build my watch list, um, all that stuff. Uh, you know, the technicals about what I'm looking for, how I trade, and all that stuff you can find in my course at corefxtrading.com, link below. Um, that is a diff that, that, that's a totally different concept than with this video. This video is strictly to go over, you know, how I do my charting, how I organize my watch list, organize the pairs I'm looking at, and really take advantage of these tools. All right, guys, so I hope you found some uh, 
you know, value in this. Make sure you check my weekly videos. They come out every weekend for the week ahead, going a full in-depth technical analysis of the markets, where the charts are at, what I'm watching for the week ahead, the U.S. majors, indexes, S&P 500, all this stuff. Um, check out all the other content on here. And again, check out my website at corefxtrading.com if you're interested in learning more about Forex trading. Thank you, guys. I appreciate you taking time to watch these videos. My returning subscribers, love you guys. Always appreciate the respect and the support. And I'll catch you guys all in the next one.